Since we started to set lights in the scenes, I want to talk about shadows. Now, when you create a light and you position it and adjust its main settings, you don't get shadows. The object might be illuminated, but there's no cast shadows. For example, I brought back the mannequin scene, and this is saved out in the Chapter 7 folder. And I've added a primitive plane, and there is a spotlight that I placed in that scene. If I create a render now through the render view, the mannequin in this plane at the bottom is illuminated, but there's no cast shadow. In other words, there's no dark area behind the mannequin's legs, behind the seat, or behind his body, where you'd normally expect a shadow because that part of those surfaces is blocked by the light because the mannequin and the seat's in the way. Now you can turn on shadows, and there's a couple of different ways to do that inside Maya. There's two main shadow types. There's depth map shadows, and there's ray trace shadows. Now, I'm going to talk about ray trace shadows later. It requires a special rendering system to create that, so I'm going to save that for a later video. So right now we're going to concentrate on depth map shadows. So if you want to turn on depth map shadow, what we can do is select the light, like the spotlight, and go to the attribute editor. I'm going to go to the tab at the right and bring that up. When the light's selected, it goes straight to the shape tab. Now we've already talked about the attributes at the top here, but if you want to turn on shadows, you have to go a little bit deeper. In fact, there's a little drop-down section called shadows. It's also called a rollout. You can click this to expand that rollout. And you'll see at the top of the rollout, underneath depth map shadow attributes, there's a use depth map shadows checkbox. This is off by default, but when you turn it on, you'll get a depth map shadow. In fact, let's just render it out and then we'll talk about how that works. And there's a shadow, a cast shadow where you expect it with one light source in the scene. Now, how does a depth map shadow work? Well, depth maps work by creating a temporary bitmap that represents the view of the light that's cast in a shadow. And that bitmap is color coded gray. And objects close to the light have a brighter color near white. And objects farther from the light have a darker color. And what that's used for is to figure out, as the renderer proceeds, what is in shadow. In other words, what object is occluding what other object. By using that depth map bitmap, the renderer can tell that, for instance, this mannequin and his seat are blocking part of the plane behind him. And that's how it figures out how to make a shadow. So let's see what this looks like a little bit closer, because there are some quality issues you have to deal with with depth map shadows. Now, if I look close, I can see that it looks blocky. There's like little stair steps with little pixels on the edge. That's because that depth map that's written out the disk is a bitmap. And that bitmap has a particular resolution, a certain number of pixels. So if you see this kind of stair stepping going on, what you can do is adjust your resolution of that bitmap. If I go back to the settings, you'll see that once that use depth map shadows is checked on, a few other attributes come to light. One important one is the resolution. That's the resolution of the bitmap. In this case, it's set to 512, which means it's 512 by 512. In that case, when I get close to the ground and the mannequin, I can see the individual pixels of that map. So my resolution is too small. So to smooth out the shadow edge, what I can do is increase the resolution. So let's try 2000. That means the map's going to be 2000 by 2000. And then I'll re-render. So 2000 by 2000 is pretty much taking care of the rough edge, and I have a smooth edge on my shadow. Now there is one other thing you have to consider, and that's your anti-aliasing quality. I mentioned it briefly, but when you render through the render view or do a batch render, there are render settings that determine how high the quality is. I want to talk about that in more detail later, but for now I'm going to show you one thing you can check on to make sure that your render quality is high enough that you can properly judge your shadow. So there's two ways to do that. You want to go to the render settings window, and there's two shortcuts. There's a shortcut here, looks like a little clapboard with two little circles. That same shortcut is up here in the status line. So I'm going to go to the one in the render view. That brings up the render settings window. So as a common tab, which determines a lot of attributes that have to do with batch rendering. And in the Maya software tab, there'll be quality settings. Now we are rendering with Maya software, which is the default rendering engine, and that's fine. So in the Maya software tab, I can check the quality and edge anti-aliasing. Edge detail aliasing will make sure my edges are nice and clean. Now right now it's at the highest quality. However, by default it's at the low quality. And low quality is okay for test renders, 
but you might see a degradation. So for instance, if I go back and render with low quality, it's a little bit rougher. Now it's pretty subtle. So I see some minor changes like along the arms and the edge of the plane where they're a little bit rougher. But if you want to make sure that you're getting good quality, what we can do is go to edge anti-aliasing and set that the highest quality. That's at the highest quality, you're guaranteed the render is doing the best it can, and therefore you can properly judge edge of the shadows. So now I'm back on highest quality, I'll go ahead and re-render that. So highest quality, in fact, I can tell it's highest quality because the edge of my geometry, like the edge of the plane, is much smoother now. In any case, so just check your render settings to make sure your edge anti-aliasing is high enough. Now we'll talk about this in more detail later, and we'll talk about more specifically how it functions. But for now, you can just check this one menu. I'm going to close the render settings window now, and we'll go back to the depth maps. So in any case, increasing the resolution of the depth map has guaranteed that I don't really see the pixels of the depth map, so I have a much cleaner edge. Now you can go even higher with the slider, and you'll get better and better quality in terms of your depth map, but the render will take longer and longer. So what you want to do is find some resolution value that works good enough for what you're looking for. In this case, 2000 works well. Now, as you increase the resolution, the shadow gets sharper and sharper. In other words, it's a hard edge. Now, you don't have any artifacts along the edge, but it's perfectly sharp, and some shadows in reality are soft. So how do you make a soft shadow with depth maps? So you can do that. The trick for that is to reduce your resolution, go smaller once again, say 256, but then increase your filter size, which is below that. It's another attribute. What filter size does is it puts a blur on the edge of the shadow to try to help disguise artifacts. So if you have low resolution, but increase your filter size, you'll get a blurry edge. So I'll put resolution to 256 and filter size to 5, and we'll give that a try. And in fact, you get a soft shadow. So small resolution, large filter size, soft shadow. The opposite is true for a sharp shadow. You want a sharp shadow, you want a large resolution, and a small filter size. And filter size defaults to 1. You can also pick in between values. For instance, I can say I want a filter size of 3 and a resolution back to 512, and you'll get a somewhat soft shadow, but not as soft as I have now. So there's a slightly soft shadow. So resolution 512, filter size 3. So you can mix and match the values of resolution and filter size to get anything from a soft shadow to a very hard shadow. But if nothing else, you should adjust the settings to help you avoid seeing the rough edges on your shadows. So that's depth map. So you want to turn off depth map shadows, you can simply go back and uncheck use depth map shadows and turn it off. Now all lights have this option except for ambient lights. Ambient lights must use ray trace shadows to create a shadow, but all the other standard light types have this option. And scenes tend to be much more realistic when you are creating at least one shadow from your main light in the scene.